Well, joining me now in Cambridge, Massachusetts is Todd Curtis. He was an airline safety engineer at Boeing. In Washington, we have Jeff Guzzetti. He's a former director of the Federal Aviation Administration's Accident Investigation Division. And in Chattanooga, Tennessee is Jim Hall. He's the former chairman of the NTSB or National Transportation Safety Board. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Good to have all these perspectives on the program. Jeff, let me start with you. We have Lion Air Flight 610. Yes, sir. We have Ethiopian Airlines 302. Hundreds of people dead. Is it Boeing's fault? Uh, it's way too early to say. And typically, Imran, it's not usually one entity's fault. It's a whole list of reasons and contributing factors. And I think in both of these cases, it's too early to nail down what the actual cause and contributing factors were. Jim Hall, the tools or the humans? Well, again, uh, as uh, Jeff said, the investigation is underway, and uh, it's too early, really, to know what the results of that investigation will be. I'm very pleased that uh, in the interim period of time, the D Department of Transportation Inspector General and Congress is looking at the certification process uh, of, on this aircraft, and will be looking at how decisions were made uh, around that process. Todd Curtis, as we've experienced the aftermath of the tragedy, especially those, you know, the, the, the people who have suffered loss when it came to the Ethiopian Airlines crash and before that the Lion Air flight, and then there was a grounded plane, a lot of people have been zeroing in on the anti-stall software, and they feel that there's definitely a connection here, and it's something to do with that. Do you feel that way? Well, I feel that there is tantalizing evidence that there may be a connection. But as Chairman Hall and Jeff uh, said earlier, it's entirely too early to draw a final conclusion. And certainly the Ethiopian authorities are looking very closely at this with respect to any connection with Lion Air. And to this point, there seems to be some sort of connection. Certainly that was the suspicion of all the various national authorities who grounded the aircraft before the U.S. authorities did. And Jeff, if it can be determined that there was a problem with the automated system and there was a kind of hack, right? So there's a little bit of a nosedive and then you've got to do something manually to bring it back up. If that was the case, and I'm presupposing something here, if that was the case, was Boeing at fault for allowing these flights to take place anyway? Well, Imran, Boeing uh, doesn't really allow the flights to take place. That would be the Civil Aviation Authority in whatever country those Boeing products are flying in. Uh, and I think we can say, at least in the Lion Air accident, that there is evidence that this automated feature uh, was involved in the accident sequence. Uh, but, you know, you need to learn more about what type of failure that was and you have to consider the mitigating factors. You know, airline pilots are trained to handle these non-normal situations because every now and then an airplane is going to have a malfunction and pilots should be trained as much. So with this automatic nose down trim uh, feature on the 737 MAX that appeared to be involved in the uh, Lion Air accident and also there's suspicions it could be involved in the Ethiopian accident, uh, to go back and say, hey, Boeing never should have allowed the airplane to fly, that's kind of a mm -hmm. non-sequitur. That isn't the way things right. work. Okay, fair enough. So, Jim, is it naive of me to think, from the outside looking in, that if there's this seeming glitch, then these things shouldn't be in the air? If there's anything that allows a little dip and a nosedive, and maybe saying nosedive is a bit of an exaggeration, but if the nose goes down and you have to adjust it as a pilot, Perhaps this is not as safe as it should be. Is that naive of me to say so? Not at all. Uh, in this situation, uh, I was uh, very disturbed that uh, this aircraft was not grounded by the FAA after the first accident with the information that uh, was obtained in terms of uh, the erratic behavior of, of the aircraft at this new system, which had been introduced only two years ago. Uh, so I hope that this will all be carefully examined. 
but this all goes to the certification process of this mm -hmm. aircraft by the Federal Aviation Administration and who made the decisions. There should be records in regard to that, in regard to the decision making on the system that is in question. Jeff, are we likely to see tightening of certification? I'm sure we will in some fashion. Uh, I don't know exactly how. I know that th there may be some discussion about that at the uh, congressional hearing today. Uh, I would like to take this time, though, to disagree with uh, Chairman Jim Hall, who I served under and is a great man with regards to aviation safety. But in this particular case, I think the FAA made the right decision in not grounding the airplane after the first accident because we didn't because they already took action. They issued an emergency airworthiness directive to alert flight crews to this potential issue and pointed the flight crews to an already existing checklist, which is the stabilizer runaway checklist, which that same checklist would have resolved the problem immediately. Uh, the second accident, when it when it occurred, I think the FAA still, made the right decision on not capriciously acting on, you know, uh, simple fear or public fear and because they had no information at that time with regards to the Ethiopian accident. Mm -hmm. Then they got some. Then they got some uh, refined satellite data and they looked at uh, trim settings in the wreckage themselves and they used that data to ground the airplane. And I think throughout this whole investigative process over the last six months, the FAA is, is acted uh, well. That said, there something was missed in the certification of the 737 MAX with regards to this uh, trim system and the investigations, all these many investigations mm -hmm. that are occurring now, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that. Jim Hall, do you accept that disagreement? Well, I accept the disagreement. I have a great deal of respect for Jeff, but uh, what the FAA did know or should have known was that that system Boeing had a separate company, and they were selling an added enhancement for safety of that system uh, to some of the uh, airlines. It had been purchased by some of the American airlines. There needs to be one level of safety in aviation, uh, not one for the United States and another one for the developing world. It's mm -hmm. our responsibility in the United States to guarantee the safety of our manufactured products. And in this case, the process which I have stated over and over again, is, involves a very cozy relationship between Boeing and the FAA, needs to be examined, and changes need to be made to ensure the safety of our products. And Todd Curtis, the person who would be in the job that you used to have at Boeing right now, airline safety engineer, what would they be thinking right now? Well, that job, as I was in it uh, about 20, 25 years ago, during the 777 development, our group was intimately involved with the development process of the 777, ensuring that new systems, new designs, met not only FAA requirements, but also Boeing requirements. In addition, we assisted our accident investigation group within Boeing to analyze current and past events. So whoever's in my old position, in that old office, they're probably going over the records of many events uh, accidents, incidents, things that wouldn't rise to the level of being an official report, trying to see if there's some sort of sequence of events that they could see that has been manifesting itself before these two accidents, trying to give some insights into the accident investigating team that can give them answers to why these two airplanes crashed. And Todd, has, has the company been hurt? It's a leviathan. It's lost tens of millions of dollars in market share in recent weeks. Uh, this is a major company. They've come out with a few statements. Have, has their response been acceptable over the past few weeks? Well, their response is muted because they're, both, they're involved in both of the accident investigations. And by longstanding international agreement, it's the countries leading those investigations who are the last word on what the investigation is, uh, has, has accomplished, what they have discovered. So if Boeing has discovered anything in the last few weeks, they will be silent on this because they have to defer to those authorities. Jeff Guzzetti, how have you assessed Boeing's response over the past couple of weeks? That's a good question, Imran. And, and I guess uh, what Todd said is correct. There, there's, 
there's not a lot of wiggle room for Boeing to make with regards to uh, sending out a public message because uh, the ICAO Annex 13 standards says that the o only the Civil Aviation Authority, uh, Acts Investigation Authority, has the authority to actually be the one voice publicly for the investigation. So Boeing has been, uh, uh, has to be mute on many issues. That said, they can still say things like, we offer our condolences, or we're, uh, uh, we're on top of this in some fashion. Um, so I'm sure in hindsight, as their communications people look back on how they reacted, there was, there's probably some room for improvement. Jim Hall, questions from passengers around the world about airworthiness, trust. They wonder if they're going to be safe. Is that just natural now for people to be nervous that perhaps what seemed infallible is not so infallible after all? Well, we've made great progress in aviation safety uh, through a system of checks and balances similar to the, that which is used in the United States government. Uh, Boeing has uh, been a fine corporation. They build excellent aircraft. The situation here that needs to be carefully examined is on the introduction of this new aircraft. Were any uh, boxes skipped or were things done differently that resulted in these two tragedies that took almost 350 lives? Uh, those are facts that uh, are out there. This is not unusual. You know, Boeing introduced the 787. There were problems with the battery. The plane was grounded. Uh, there were uh, things that were fixed on that aircraft, and it's back in service today. Uh, that's why we need to be very cautious and prudent in aviation. When we introduce a new aircraft, and there is uh, a, one crash, and then a second, uh, we don't need to be waiting for the third mm -hmm. in order to make corrections. Todd, is that a fair point? That's a very fair point because uh, safety, or more precisely, the management of risk in aviation is an ongoing enterprise. And one doesn't have to wait and one should not wait for a tragedy to strike before problems that are seen are resolved. And this should be resolved not just because the FAA or some other entity, uh, government entity says so, but because those directly involved in the design, manufacture, and operation of the aircraft have a responsibility and a duty to do so. Right. And, and Jeff, as you mentioned earlier on, with Congress looking at it, with the Justice Department, with the Department of Transportation, the FAA, everybody's trying to get to the bottom of this. Do you believe that they will get to the bottom of this? I do believe that they'll get to the bottom of this. Uh, frankly, I think these uh, growing number of investigations, some of them criminal investigations, is a little bit blown out of proportion, a little bit of a hysteria in there. Uh, the most important investigations are the ones happening uh, on, on the ground in Indonesia and Ethiopia. The civil aviation authorities, so it's the KNKT in uh, uh, Indonesia, and it's the Civil Aviation Authority Accident Investigation Group in Ethiopia. They're purely motivated to determine the cause uh, without any uh, determining blame or culpability. They want to get to, to the cause and factors and issue recommendations. And with the help of the NTSB and Boeing and the FAA and, and the other parties to those investigations, they will get to the bottom of it. Okay, well, Lion Air Flight 610 in Indonesia left 189 people dead. Ethiopian Airlines 302, 157 people killed. People want answers, lots of questions, lots of blame at the moment. And it's been really good to get uh, somewhat technical analysis from all of you as to what could have possibly been the reason. And I appreciate the humility from all of you as well, despite all of your expertise. I, I really appreciate it. I don't get it a lot on this program, which is mainly political. So it's been fascinating to talk to all of you. Todd Curtis, Jeff Gazzetti, and Jim Hall. Good to have you on the Newsmakers. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.